Hello, <clears throat> hello, 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 everybody. Tanika Maria here. Out here wanting to share just some brief nuggets. I'm out here on my uh, corporate job here in Morrisville, North Carolina, on a break. Meant to get out here Monday, but just couldn't pull it off. And wanted to share with you, come out here real quick, and those of you who may catch this live or on the replay, but I just wanted you to realize that slow learning is the best learning. Hey there, Phil. Slow learning is the best learning. And we want to rush our process. We want to just kind of, and we beat ourselves up when we make mistakes. And a lot of us, we're coming to the end of the year and we, we don't feel like we're where, where we want to be, right? Like I should have been here. I should have been there. You know, and it's been a rough, it's been a weird, it's been a hard year. And we look at ourselves and think, gosh, oh, you know, and 2021 was an exceptionally fast and accelerated year. I feel like we've lived like three years in like two years, like four or five years in about a year and a half, right? So it's been rough. But beating ourselves up about what we should have done, what we could have done, how we should have showed up differently in this situation or showed up differently in that situation, it's not going to help us do any better. Beating yourself up does not cause progression. Kindness does. Amen. I'm glad you're being healed. Being kind, and I'm learning this because I've been bad on the condemnation. I have, <clears throat> I have been guilty of condemning myself and, and the negative self-talk and it's not helping it's not helping progress you further it keeps you stuck in the same cycle and so what are we doing it's self-inflicted pain it's self-inflicted pain and the reality is you've paid your suffering dues you've suffered long enough creating more self-inflicted pain is not going to get you help you to change to be a better person Human beings don't change by being criticized and beat down. Human beings change by love and kindness as they grow into who they are, as they begin to know and realize God's purpose and get grounded in their identity. And so I came out here to encourage you to, to no longer do self-inflicted pain as we're coming to the end of the year. I want you to realize that you're worthy, to take your time, that slow learning, when, when we're in the process of transformation, the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when you in, in, in consume a lot of content on Instagram and you're watching my video, you're watching other people's videos, you're doing this and reading that book and studying this and you're on YouTube, YouTube University, Googling and listening to a lot of stuff on YouTube and you're reading and doing all of this stuff, going to therapy and coaches and reading and watching and, and learning stuff. You can only change in incrementally. You have to decide, okay, how am I going to practically put this in my life? And what does it look like for me to take this one nugget and practice doing this one thing to shift my mindset? What needlepoint shifts can, that can I do today? What can I practice today? How can I practice casting down a vain imagination today? How can I practice the presence of God today in this moment? How can I practice gratitude? How can I be a little bit kinder to myself? How can I shift that thought that I'm thinking that's crazy in my head right now? How can I not let myself go down 30 minutes in that trail? How can I turn that now today? That is slow learning and slow learning gives you traction because it's day by day, minute by minute. We change and shift from glory to glory, faith to faith, moment by moment, minute by minute. It is a continual process and it's not some big bam, boom, I'm changed. So if it seems like you're learning, you're changing, your, your revolution, your restoration, your healing process is taking a long time. Hear me well, it is practice. We're practicing. We're, we're working out. We're daily working out our soul salvation. And what do I mean by that? The salvation of your mind, the, your will, your emotions. It's a daily work to renew that, right? And so it's a process. And so slow learning, it gives you traction. 
it gives you wings as you begin to practice that new thought I'm gonna practice my new thought process I'm gonna practice watching my words I'm gonna practice being aware of what I'm thinking in this moment when I'm thinking some crazy vain imagination when I'm coming up with some story that's hurting my own feelings you know what us women I don't know about men that may watch this but as women we can make up the most wild vain imagination story in our head and it's not even true and we can hurt our own feelings and make our own selves mad with the story we got in our heads so here's an example of how you can change that slowly it's not going to happen overnight but, but <clears throat> excuse me but when you catch yourself in a vain imagination <coughs> i don't know what's got in my throat <coughs> it's very real real fit wine chick when you catch yourself in a vain imagination, instead of beating yourself up about it, instead of like feeling bad and guilty and condemned, when you're in those moments, this is the time where, okay, God help me to catch myself before I go down that rabbit trail. Let me not be in a vain imagination and in this story that I made up because this person didn't like my post, because this person didn't speak, because this person didn't return my call, because this happened and that happened. And now I'm piecing together this whole story in my head that has no basis in reality. Lord, help me to catch myself when I'm doing it. That's what slow learning looks like. That's what being transformed by the renewing of my mind looks like. It looks like inviting God. It looks like praying into it, inviting God into it, being aware of it, having a plan for it. So when you go there, you catch yourself. And, it's, and when you catch yourself, you're able to reel that thing back in. And instead of beating yourself up, condemning yourself, sitting in some play, place of self-inflicted pain and suffering because you've done it again, realize you're worthy. You're enough and you're still in the process. And so if you see my post that I've put out, celebrate who you are becoming. Celebrate who you're, you are becoming right now as you're transitioning into your new, as you're transitioning into your next. I don't have it all together. I'm still very, very much in the journey. And everything I talk, talk about is what I'm going through, right? And so I want you to celebrate who you are becoming now as God continues to heal you and mature you in your process. And I want you to remember that you are very much loved even when you struggle, even when you slip and dip and fall down. And I'm not talking about this overt sin. I'm not talking about messing up and doing something, you know, really egregious that you know you don't have any business doing. I'm talking about just the daily things of life where you're trying to do better you're trying to level up you're doing your best to show up as, as the best version of yourself and you're still you know you can get up in the morning set your intentions for the day write in your journal pray have your goals got your gratitude journal got your candle got your tea you know and you're ready and then you start your day and then a couple hours later in your mind you cussing somebody out you're <laughs> You've already fallen off the wagon mentally or something happens and now your emotions and now you're anxious all day and you're nervous and you're restless and you can't focus and you had good intentions. This is not the time. Remember, you are still loved. It, you are still very much enough, even in the midst of that. And just like the example I gave, the post that I put out today, you're still loved even when you struggle. I talked about how, like, if you have a baby, like a, a 11 month old child that's learning how to walk, and when that baby transitions from crawling to pulling, the, the baby pulls himself up on the table or pulls himself up by, you know, on a chair or whatever and starts trying to walk, you're not like going off on that baby. Oh, you just, why you keep falling? Why don't you go ahead and walk, right? You're not doing that to that baby. You're like trying to encourage that baby to keep on walking. And so the baby tries to stand up and then it falls back down on its behind and the baby gets up again and tumbles and falls again. And that baby gets back up again and that baby keeps falling. And eventually that baby walks, but we're not fussing and condemning and criticizing that baby as it's trying. We're like, go baby, you can do it. 
Well, that's how God sees you. Well, we're over here tripping in our mind. I'm over here tripping in my mind. I'm up here beating myself up. I'm wallowing in pity parties and I'm trying. I'm praying. I'm writing. I'm reading. I'm getting coaching. I'm going to therapy. I'm in church. I'm this and that and I'm still messing up. Do you, do you really think? That God is treating you like looking down on you less. He sees your struggle. He sees your effort. He sees the intentions of your heart. Just like you do with that little baby. You're not going to beat that baby up when that baby's trying to walk. God is not beating you up when you're trying to walk either. When you're transitioning from one level to another. So I encourage you. I just wanted to share this. I didn't intend to be out here long. I'm out here in my car, you guys. I'm at the office taking a little break. And I just wanted to share that with you, that you are still very much loved, even when you struggle. Slow learning is the best learning. We practice. It's about the practicing. It's about the practicing and the progression of the renewing of your mind. Every time you get a hold of a vain imagination and a story that you've made up in your head that hurts your own feelings and you're able to stop that, that's practice. When you're able to catch yourself with all these wild things going on in your head and you stop it, that's progress, right? Now you're now and it's daily, it's little, it's small, but after a while, by and by, here a little, there a little, you realize you're not doing it anymore. By and by, after a while, you're, you're feeling better because your mind is better, because you're thinking better, because guess what? You actually lived out Romans 12, 1. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. And it's not God is not beating me upside my head and neither am I. And I'm just daily working it out in my day-to-day -day work, in my daily day-to-day -day thinking. I'm catching myself when I'm going there. I'm catching myself when I'm in my, in my feelings. I'm catching myself when I'm getting ready to say something and do something. I'm, I'm, I'm exhibiting self-control. I'm practicing doing the right thing. It's just about the practice. Don't even try to be perfect. Just practice doing the right thing. Amen. So that's what it's about. Glad you guys are here. Thank you for being here, Philip. Blessings to you all. For those of you who, who would catch this on the replay, I just wanted to encourage you. Slow learning is the best learning and you are still very much loved. You are still very much wor worthy even when you struggle in your journey. So my name is Tanika Maria. I help high achieving women of faith get real, be healed, and move on out of life's painful transitions. And I, 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 I'm all about emotional resiliency, healing, and mastery as we level up to the next degree that God has us to function in. Definitely click the link in my bio to get, I already have my book. I did it on the sneak tip, you guys. My two books, A Woman's Journey Home and Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now. Both of these books are very practical, very wise. Uh, men have purchased these books because there's so much in the book, but the links are in my bio on Amazon. They're now $5.99 for the paperback. Yes, paperback I think is $5.99 and the Kindle version is $2.99 for Black Friday. So if you're hearing this and you listen all the way to the end of this on the replay, it would behoove you to go ahead and order those books because they are already down at the Black Friday prices for $5.99 and $2.99. So definitely will make a great gift, get it electronically or get that paperback on Amazon. So blessings to you all. I'll be back out here again soon. Take care and talk to you soon.